All right, here is your last video on graphing for trig. And today we are putting everything together from our first two days of graphing. So we have our first equation. We see that we are given an A value is one half. The B value is three. Our H is pi over six. And our K is a positive one what all of those numbers mean. Well, for to find our period, we do 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b, so divide by 3, so our period is 2 pi over 3. To find our interval, we take that and we divide it by 4. Remember, so important that you are remembering how to divide fractions. When we divide those out, we end up with our interval of pi over 6. Our amplitude is just our a value at one half. Our lateral shift occurs inside of the parentheses and it's the opposite, so we are going to go right pi over 6. Remember, don't say positive or negative here, tell me directions. And our vertical shift is a positive 1, making it go up 1. So I want you to go ahead and take that information and set up your graph. And you can go ahead and start with the basic cosine graph if you would like. So go ahead and press pause. Okay, so our period and our interval have been taken care of with the labels on our x-axis. Our amplitude is one half. So we take that starting point of cosine, which normally starts at one, and we are going to multiply it by one half, which means we are now at one half. But we have two shifts. We have to go right pi over six which makes us here, and then we have to go up one. So make sure that when you go up one, you're not going up to one, you're going up one whole unit, which is now putting you at one and a half. So again, we normally start at one, we multiply by one half, which we're now at one half. We do a lateral shift right, pi over six, and then a vertical shift up one, giving us our starting point. Now when we start at cosine, we did not reflect, it was not a negative amplitude, which means we are starting up at the crest, the top of our graph. And the top of our graph is happening at one and a half. Our amplitude is a half, so our next line is going to be at one. We're going to go down one half. There's going to be a vertical change distance of one half between each of our levels, which means our lower level is going to be down at one half. So our three levels are at a half, one, and one and a half. Now since we started up at the top, we have to go until we reach the lower limit. So our next point over horizontally is pi over three. Oops, I skipped a level. That's in our middle level since we were just at the top. Down, up, up. Now we shifted right pi over six, so I have to add another one six, which would give us five pi over six. And then we end up coming back down. Same thing over here. When we go left, we have to go down one half. Down. making sure that we circle that starting point and we can visibly see our points that we are graphing on. The amplitude again is that vertical shift or that vertical distance between your points. We had a lateral shift and a vertical shift. Last one, we have a sine graph and here our a is a negative three. We don't know our b yet, we need to rewrite. I want you to press pause and see if you can correctly rewrite your equation. It is very important that you are able to pull out those b values. Okay, let's see how you did. When we pulled the one half out, one half divided by one half just gives us one. When we have one divided by one half, we get two. So that means that our b value is one half. Our h is a negative two pi and our k is a negative two. So what that all means, we have our two pi divided by our b one half, giving us a period of four pi. 
We divide that by 4 to get that each interval is going to be pi. Our amplitude is 3 because it's the absolute value, but because this is negative, I can't forget that I have to flip my graph. The lateral shift, it shows a positive 2 pi, but we go the opposite way, so that's going to be left 2 pi. And our vertical shift, we are going to go down 2. All right, you know the drill. Go ahead and press pause and set up your graph. And remember, we have a sine one this time. Okay, so we know that a sine graph normally starts at 0, 0. We have an amplitude of 3, so 0 times 3 is still 0. We have a negative, so we get to flip it, but we're on the x-axis, so there really is no flipping. We go left 2 pi. That is our horizontal shift, so we are 1, 2, and then down 2, 1, 2. So this is going to be my starting point of my sine graph. Sine starts in the middle, so this is going to be my middle level. My amplitude is 3, so I know that I have to go 3 up and 3 down. So negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5. So my lower level is going to be at a negative 5, and my upper level is going to be up 3, 1, 2, 3, up at a positive 1. So those are going to show me the three different levels of my graph. Now normally in a sine graph, as we saw in the gray one, we go up, down, down, up. But because I have a negative A value, so I'm going up, down, down, I have to go down first. I'm flipping that graph. And then we go up, up until I get to that crest, and then down. Remember, five points, one, two, three, four, five. That's going to be one complete cycle of my graph. Then I have to go in the other direction. So I've got to go until I hit that. So up, down, down, up. So I've got to add some in here. So we've got a negative 5 pi. And our last point is going to be at a negative 6 pi. And again, we see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. Now remember, these last two problems included everything from the past two days. Our, what our period does, how our interval can change, how our amplitude change things, how our different vertical and horizontal shifts occur. Just make sure that when you do your changes, you are going in the order in which you see them. And I know you're so shocked, but that is it for today. A video under eight minutes. All done.